Hi, this is Jamie with Stillmeyer Games. I am headed to a wedding in a few minutes, but I wanted to first talk about relationship-driven marketing for you. This is something that I've learned along the way of creating and, and running Stillmeyer Games. A lot of the type of marketing that I do is built on genuine relationships that I formed with bloggers and reviewers and just people in the community in general, the game industry. Um, and it, this is a wonderful thing about the game industry, as I think you'll discover, that people in the industry are really open to helping each other. Um, in different ways. People want to help each other in different ways. For example, if you want my help, I like it when you post public comments on my blog. I don't like private correspondences because it's, it's more efficient for me to help people in public than in private. But people might have different preferences for that. So a few of the tips that I, I, I'd recommend you keep in mind if you think about relationship-driven marketing is first to stop thinking about promoting your project and to think about how you can add value to others. This is a mindset change that can, that can influence a lot more than just relationship-driven marketing. But the idea is like when you contact someone, a blogger or a viewer, um, to talk about your project, rather than pushing your product onto them, rather find ways to add value to them. Um, give them your, your time. Say, you and I, I have, a, I have a game that I'd love for you to review. I'm happy to send you a prototype and then a finished copy of the game if it's, if it's published. Or I'm happy to provide um, an interview or a guest blog or things like that. And, and don't just do that in mass email form. Pick the, the people who you genuinely are interested in getting to know better, those audiences that you generally want to be, generally want to be a part of, and uh, use that type of content to supplement the content that they already have. Two, um, I highly recommend talking about stuff you love. Uh, I, I think this is a wonderful thing, thing in the game industry where you can talk about other games and form a lot of awesome relationships based off of that. Talk about the games you love, talk about the mechanisms you love, the art you love, the theme you love, the designers you love, um, rather than just focusing on the thing that you were creating, and people will be drawn to that. Um, one other big part of this is to figure out who your target audience is, whether it's for a game in general, the gaming audience in general, or which types of gamers um, are your target audience and target them specifically. And what I mean by target is join the communities that those people are part of. So if you are a designer who is specifically interested in um, card games, find the card game group on Facebook. Engage in conversations about card games on BoardGameGeek. Become a part of those communities and you'll start to form some great connections with the people there. Last and most importantly, don't forget about your existing backers. If you're thinking about this concept of relationship-driven marketing during a live Kickstarter project, um, it might be your instinct to reach outside of your project to try to draw on more backers, but your most valuable resource are your current backers yourself. So don't forget about the relationships you're forming with those current backers because they're already there. They're, they're, they've already opted in and they just want to enhance those relationships and they want the project to do well too, as long as you don't forget about them. Those are my thoughts. If you have any other questions or thoughts about relationship-driven marketing, feel free to head over to my blog and comment there and I'm happy to talk to you on that community. Thanks.